So often we fail to recognize the fact that as we are raising children, we are actually establishing what they will for at least part of their life see as normal. Hey, it's Amber, wife, mother, type A child of God. Here are little things we look at everyday issues from a biblical perspective with one simple goal, to know and love God more. Thanks for listening. But before we get to today's episode, I want to talk about ways that you can continue to strengthen your faith walk. We have so many resources available for you at our website. So you can find Pastor Mike Novotny's weekly sermons. You can hear the Grace Talks devotions. You can hear all of our podcasts that we offer. And we have so many books and resources available on many different topics. All you have to do is go to timeofgrace.org and all of these things are at your fingertips. The way that we do things becomes their norm. So that includes things like what time they and we go to bed, the things that we eat, the foods that we eat, what we feel or how we go to church, if we feel like it's a priority or just something we do sometimes, our TV habits, our reading, our sports, our hobbies. So many things are being established in our children's hearts and minds as we're raising them. We are going to be able to sort of establish what they see as normal and what they see as ordinary. And with this episode, I just really want you to examine your life. Now, if you've already raised your children, no worries. This is not about guilt. And even if your children are older, um, there's always room for improvement. Looking back, you, you can always say, man, I wish I would have done something differently. That's not what this is about, though. Even if you now have grandchildren that are coming over to your house, you get to establish what is ordinary now. And um, you know, you have the, the wonderful opportunity to decide what's important and what seems normal to you and then to your grandchildren as they come to your house. Some of the things I want to think about and I want you to think about is what kind of language do you use? Are you prone to grumbling? You know, if the weather is bad, if it's raining out or if it's a thunderstorm and you have to start your day, are you right off the bat in a in a bad mood and complaining and grumbling like, oh man, I just hate it when the weather is like this. Or if it's cold out, I'm totally guilty of this. Winter is just not my season. So I, I'm confessing right now, God help me to do better. But you know, when I have to go out to my car and it's cold in the morning, a lot of times I'm like, oh, I don't want to go out the door, which is not a good mood to set for my children. But what do you do when things go wrong? Are you quick to blame somebody else? Are you quick to um, throw a tantrum? Or do you just go, okay, hold on. We have to figure out what to do here. Um, This isn't going to work. So what's our next best choice or our next best effort? Again, like I said, how do you feel about church? Is church something that you gladly get up and are excited to be a part of? Or is it one of those things like, come on, guys, we got to get up and go to church because dad says we have to go. Or, um, you know, we haven't been there for a month, so I think we better go and show our face so we don't get a call. Or, um, you know, how do you feel about church? How do you want your kids to feel about church? How do you talk about the pastor when you're driving home from church? You know, if you're quick to criticize the pastor and criticize the church, you know, you might not be surprised when your children decide they're not going to go anymore. Um, Things like sarcasm. I, mm, I'm really good at sarcasm. I find it hilarious. And it was really funny until my kids surpassed me at how good they were at sarcasm. And then it wasn't funny anymore because that's sort of when I realized that, you know, it can hurt a lot of feelings and that quick wit, 
you know, is also sort of a put down a lot of times. And there's a lot of truth in jest. And I don't always want to hear the truth in the middle of, you know, burning the toast and the smoke alarms going off or whatever. I, I just don't really want to hear the joke. So it's all fine and dandy until, you know, your kids use it on you. So I want to talk about some of the things that I did well as I was raising my children, some of the normals that I think kind of worked well for our family. And then I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that I would probably do differently if I had a chance to do over, which of course I don't. And then we're going to bring it all to a conclusion. So some of the things that I did well, um, when my kids were little, we had praise music playing pretty consistently all throughout our house. So whether the kids were in a good mood or a bad mood, I had praise and worship music on. I was dancing around, singing at the top of my lungs, and um, really made that a part of our lives. In fact, when my daughter was, when I, my oldest was in like seventh grade, I started a junior praise band so that she and some of her friends from church could sing some of those songs uh, during our worship services. And the reason that I think that was a good thing to do is it is amazing how when one of those songs comes on the radio now, or if somehow, um, you know, we come across something where one of those songs plays, my kids are quick to sing along. And I have even really thank the Lord that there are times that I hear their playlist going while they're in the shower and I hear some of the songs from when they were growing up. Now they're mixed with some songs that I wouldn't necessarily want on their playlist, but I am glad that they were introduced to praise music and that it became part of the culture of our house and that it's in their heart. I hope that as they go into their own lives and move out, that that is something that they take with them. We taught our kids to work hard. So for us, it wasn't just like, a, you know, lay around. There's no work to be done. Our kids did chores, um, helped us out. If there were things to be done, you know, many hands make light work. So if the Christmas tree needed to go up, they helped out. Um, if we had to do something outside, they helped out. In 2020, we took a bunch of trees down on our property. They were scrub trees, buckthorn. And we had this wooded area and we took a bunch of trees down and our kids worked so hard for days helping us to do that. So um, I'm really glad that all of our kids have, as soon as they were old enough, 14 and 15 years old, they've all gotten jobs. They've all worked hard. That's been something that's really been um, part of the culture of our family and that I think we did pretty well. We were always money conscious, and I don't know if our kids would say that this is a good thing or a bad thing, but let me tell you, it has worked in some ways, and and here's how. So my husband worked full-time. I stayed at home for five or six years, and then I worked very part-time and and different degrees of part-time, and so money was always sort of one of those things that wasn't in, you know, huge supply. So... Our kids accepted hand-me-downs and, you know, a lot of, for the, for especially those younger grades, they didn't care. When they get older, then they go to school with kids who are like, oh, that's my sweatshirt. You know, then it's a little bit not so fun. But my kids, at least my girls, have become huge thrifters. In fact, like this shirt that I'm wearing right now came from the thrift store. I mean, it's something that we love to do and it's kind of fun to go see what you can find. The other thing that has been huge in that respect is that um, we have stayed at some people's houses, different places in the country for free because we've been willing to, you know, like clean their house or, you know, do a little work or because we let them stay with us and therefore they were willing to, you know, give us their cabin on the lake for a week or whatever. And by doing that, we were able to go places we wouldn't have been able to go otherwise because paying for a hotel room for six people gets a little spendy. So we were super money conscious, but we were willing to trade people for things. And um, we we had a lot of, and because we weren't, you know, too good to accept people's hand-me-downs, we got things like canoes and furniture and all kinds of things. So um that's been something that my kids have find, kind of, you know, 
grown up with. Um, I think another thing that especially their dad, I want to say, ingrained in them is really the idea to watch out for the least of these. Steve has been so good at saying, you know, um, stand up for the bully on the bus. And he actually will tell them stories about how he did that when he was growing up and the and the things that he did. Steve has worked in um, as a nurse, you know, with the weakest, the diseased, the sick, and um, has one of the kindest hearts of anybody that I know. I work with the elderly. And so um, our children sort of have grown up knowing, look, if there's a widow, you need to take care of her. And if um, these kids don't have a very good home, make sure you ask them over and tell them they can eat our food and don't even worry about, you know, whatever, give them your sweatshirt, do whatever. And, you know, we'll replace it. It's not a problem. And to see my kids now being able to watch out for other people, um, or do things, you know, their grandma will call and just say, Hey, I need help with this. And it's just not even a problem. They just, that's just an expectation that they quickly go do without worrying about it all, which is really a neat thing to see. And then um, our family has been pretty good about helping each other. I have to say, um, I said that we were um, bent a bit towards sarcasm. And, um, you know, we help each other, but we might be laughing at each other as we're helping each other. Um, we forgive each other. And um, we've stayed a pretty close family. In fact, you know, my children are, I have a 22, 20, 17, and just about 15 year old, and they're all still at home right now. Next year, that will change. But um, they've stayed in the same proximity. We enjoy going on vacations together. We enjoy doing things together. We enjoy family night together. And that's a really neat thing and a huge blessing. Um, And I I give God the glory for that. So those are some of the things that we've done well, including the fact that my husband is by far one of the funniest guys I've ever met. And anyone who knows that would absolutely second that. He can tell a story and have people rolling on the ground laughing. And that has definitely served our family well too. Okay, so what are some of the things that I did badly as far as choosing our ordinary? Um... You know, I've been pretty open about the fact that I didn't always have a very clean house and that I struggled with that aspect of things. And in some ways, I feel that that took away from part of my children's childhood. And the root cause of it was so easy once we understood that we just needed to get rid of like half of what we had. We just had too much stuff. The more stuff you have, you know, you have to make decisions. You either have to get a bigger house or you have to have the amount of stuff that fits into that house without it, you know, spilling out of closets and being all over the floor and that type of thing. And in 2020, we dramatically downsized at least by half of our house. And so that's made a huge difference. My children have friends over all the time. And I wish I would have done that earlier and been more um, comfortable just having people over, having people in. Um you know, the good and the bad of that is that I think my children all can easily get rid of things now because they don't want to go back there. So that's a, that's a blessing in and of itself. But, um, again, I can't, I can't go back to that. So, um, you know, I think another thing that I didn't do great when I was raising them is I stayed in some situations longer than I should have, um, situations that were very, um, bad for me, especially. And I think my kids are more prone to seeing people for who they are sooner than I was recognizing this isn't a good situation. And if you talk to somebody and let them know that this isn't working, or this is hurting my feelings, or there would be a better way, and they ignore you, blow you off or worse, persecute you. Um, you know, Jesus said to shake the dust off your feet. So I'm not talking about a marriage, like getting out of a marriage without going to counseling or anything like that. But I did allow myself to be in some situations for far too long. And my kids saw how hurtful that was, not just for me, but for our whole family. 
And so I've, I've learned I don't, I don't uh, stay as long anymore when things don't seem to be going in the right direction. I'm much more prone to being like, you know what, we're just going in opposite directions and, you know, I, I'm just going to go do my thing and you do your thing. And then, you know, there'll just be peace. Um, I didn't always see the end game. I, I think I got wrapped up in each season without realizing that seasons in motherhood go, come and go really quickly. So what seems like is lasting forever, whatever it is, the potty training phase or elementary school when you're, you know, trying to learn Bible passages or helping a child learn to read and every night you're, you know, sitting on the couch reading these books together and I would be, I would just feel like these things were going to last forever. And looking back, each stage was so short and it felt like it was so long at the time. But I mean, these seasons go so quickly and before you know it, they're over and you never know when it's going to be the last time that you're sitting on the couch and they're reading a book to you. It's just suddenly gone and and you don't even realize that it doesn't happen anymore until you look back. And so um, I wasn't always super deliberate about being in the moment, enjoying each season for what it was. And sometimes I was getting really flustered by the different things, you know, carpooling kids to the basketball, you know, practices or tournaments or whatever seemed like it would be a always thing. And it wasn't, it was honestly a very short number of years, all things considered. But at the time, it really, really stressed me out. And now I wish I could have just sort of been like, well, this is where we're at. And someday I'll look back at this and it it didn't take forever. Um, I didn't always recognize that the behavior was just a symptom of what was in my children's heart. So a lot of times I responded to the behavior without digging deeper. And I wish I would have done that. I wish when my children were acting out, I would have sat down and had a talk with them instead of just grounding them or taking away their phone or, um, you know, telling them they couldn't watch TV for, you know, a week or whatever. Because as they've gotten older and all those things are behind you. I mean, I have a 22-year-old and a 20-year-old. I, there is no punishment anymore. They are their own people. Um, that's what you do. As things happen and as they make choices that you don't agree with, you sit down and talk and you say, why did you choose to make that decision? Or what were you thinking? Or, you know, what made you think that that was the right move then? And it is so much more rewarding to be able to sit down and see what's in their heart versus just responding to whatever they did. So I wish I would have been on top of that way, way, way earlier but I wasn't. Um, what else? I think then I've mentioned this before too, but the, I mean, I think the last thing I'm going to mention is just the positive reinforcement. I wish I would have realized so much sooner how much that does. If you want to change a behavior in your children, it happens with positive reinforcement, hands down. You can punish all you want, and that may have some impact. And, and that's part of discipline. Absolutely. It's positive reinforcement plus the punishment. But from what I've seen, at least with my children, the positive reinforcement and just building them up and encouraging them and catching them doing well. Um, when I do that and I praise them, they are so much more prone to keep doing that. And so I would have disciplined a whole lot more on the positive side than the negative side. And I caught on to that way too late. Like, I think my son was like 15 years old when he finally said something to me, you know, about never, like he said something like, do I ever do anything right, mom? And that was what woke me up to the fact that I was always concentrating on the negative instead of concentrating on the positive. All right. So where does this leave us? you're not going to have a perfect house. There's no way you're going to get it all right all the time, nor should you try to. I mean, you should do the best you can. You should commit your children to the Lord. You should pray, ask God to help you be the mother you're supposed to be. And you do the best you can and then be humble and 
apologize when you need to, you know, when you've done something wrong and you've handled something poorly or, you know, like me, I spent way too many years with a messy house and I can't take that back. But what I can do is say, you know, I'm sorry. And I've learned and, um, we're in a different place now and we're going to go forward and I'm going to do the best I can as far as hosting your friends and doing what you need um, me to do. And uh, that's all I can do. Hopefully we all learn from that experience. Martin Luther said, what you do in your house is worth as much as if you did it up in heaven for our Lord God. And I think that's so important. Um, Take it seriously, the routines that you establish for your children, because you are doing the work of the Lord. You're raising Christians and there's nothing ordinary about making sure that your children know the Lord. It's, it's extraordinary. It's wonderful. It's a big deal, and we need to take it seriously. I hope you find this helpful. This has been Little Things, because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things. Thanks for taking the time to listen today. If you were listening and you thought of somebody who you know needs to hear this message, would you please send it to them? We count on you to share these messages of hope and encouragement and God's love with others. Thanks. We're in this together. God bless.